Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 1 from the May 2009 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so they start off by telling us that JD Ponting started a business selling computer storage devices. So he started business. He provides the following list of transactions which occurred during January 2008. So they give us this nice long list of transactions here. Right? So instead of going through them one by one and talking through them and explaining them, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to pull up the cash book and enter the information in the cash book as we go through the transactions one by one. So the first item on January the 1st says, deposited $5,000 of personal savings in the bank. So this sounds like, he's, well, they did tell us eh, that he's starting business. So we're going to put that on the debit side of the cash book under the bank column and we're going to say capital because the owner is depositing 5000 of his personal savings into the bank. So anything the owner, any resource the owner puts in is capital and it's going to be increase the asset. So that's why it's on the debit side of the cash book under the bank account. Now, just to clarify, this is not a debit to capital. This is a debit in the cash book and the particulars or details that's it, that well, it says capital, right? Because that is where the money, the 5,000 came from. And it being under bank means that the money was put into bank, right? So again, this is not a debit to capital. It's a debit to the cash book showing that the money came from capital. Okay, the next item we're seeing also on the first says as follows. Oops. Right. So deposited 4,500 of a 5,000 credit union loan in the same account. So we got a $5,000 credit union loan out of which we deposited 4,500 in the bank. The balance was kept for the office. The balance meaning the 500. So we took a loan of 5,000. We put 4,500 in the bank. So there's a $500 difference. So we kept it in the office as cash. And they also tell us the loan required a payment of 1% interest at the end of each month for the next three years. Okay, so because the assets of cash and bank, those assets are both increasing, we're going to put the debits on the, sorry, the items on the debit side, right? So you're going to put under the, on the debit side, under the bank column 4,500, because that's how much we put into the same account, as the question said. And the balance, the 500, was kept for office use. It was kept as cash. And where did the money come from? From a credit union loan. So again, it's on the debit side because the both assets of cash and bank are increasing. And to record an increase in an asset, you need to debit the asset account. Okay, the next item says that we bought office desk and safe for $800 paying by check. So office desk and safe are like fixtures and fittings, right? A desk is furniture, the safe is like fittings, so maybe furniture and fittings. So we're gonna go on the credit side and we're going to enter that item under the bank column. Why bank? Because it said we pay by check. Check means the bank was affected. We use the bank to pay for these items. And the credit side is the side we're entering this on because the asset of bank is decreasing. And to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account, right? And of course, what are we paying for? We are paying for furniture and fittings. So again, this is not a credit to furniture and fittings. This is a credit to the cash book showing that we made a payment and the payment was in respect of furniture and fittings. Okay, moving on to the next transaction. It says that we paid $1,500 for rent for January by check. Okay, so we have another check payment. So we are once again going to go on the credit side of the cash book. So on the credit side, you're going to see rent and the $1,500 amount is on the bank. Why on the bank? Because we paid rent by check, which means bank was affected. We made a payment, which means bank is going down. Bank is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. And of course, we have rent as the detail or the particular because that is what we are paying. Okay, the next item. On the fifth, we are seeing that we bought supplies for sale at a cost of 6000 on credit from Technol Supplies. Okay, this should have said we, we bought goods or stock for, for resale um from technol now it's a it's a credit purchase which means this will go in the purchases journal and not in the cash book but i suspect that we have a payment to technol that we'll see further on in this list of transactions so we are going to come back to this next item on the 10th it says cashed a check of 900 for office use so what that means is that we, we wrote a check 
And the, the, we didn't pay it to anybody. We wrote cash on the check and we went to the bank and they gave us money. So it's like a kind of old fashioned bank card or ATM card. You know the ATM cards, they go to the ATM, put their card in, they type in your information, you can take out some money. Right. So prior to having these cards, and even now, a business or a person can write cash on a check, put the amount of money they want and sign it, go to the counter, the teller, give it there, and they'll get the cash from their account. Now, what's going on here, therefore, is that the business is taking money out of the bank to hold as cash. So clearly they feel they don't have enough cash on hand, so they're taking some cash out of the bank. So for it to come out of bank, it means bank is going to decrease, which of course would necessitate a credit entry. So on the credit side of the cash book under the bank column, you're going to see 900. Now the particulars tell us where the money went, what was paid for. Now in this case, we weren't paying anything. We were simply taking money out to hold as cash. And under the folio column, you're seeing a C, which means a contra entry, which means that this item affected both sides, both cash and bank in the cash book, right? Which means on the debit side, we have to put an entry that matches. So on the debit side, you are seeing an entry under the cash column for 900, which of course matches the amount taken out of the bank and you're seeing bank. So, so this tells us where the money came from. Remember, items entered on the debit side are receipts, money coming into the cash book. And the details or particulars tell us where the money came from. Now, of course, it simply came out of the bank account and the C corroborates that because that means it was a contra entry, which means money was switched or exchanged between the cash and bank account. Okay, let's take a look at the next transaction now. So on the 12th, they are telling us that we bought a second-hand van for 2400 paid by check, and spent a further 1300 in repairs on the van. The mechanic accepted a check for that amount. Okay, so we have two check payments. One for the motor van for 2400 and one for the motor repairs of 1300 Now, both of these items are on the same day, and they both go on the credit side because... They represent payments, which means decreases. In, in this case, our bank account because we use checks. And of course, bank is an asset. If you're making a payment out of bank, your asset of bank is decreasing. And to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So we're crediting the cash book in respect of those transactions. Now, on the 14th, they are telling us that we had credit sales. But credit sales is not recorded in the cash book. It's recorded in the sales journal. But I suspect we may have something to do with this later on because they have the terms agreed when we net 10% in 10 days. So if they pay, if so we sold them goods on credit with 5,700. So if they pay within 10 days, which would be by the 24th because this transaction is on the 14th, we will give them 10% cash discount. So we have to look out for that a bit later. Next, on the 19th, we are seeing Miscellaneous business expenses of five fifty they were paid in cash. Okay, so by now you might have the hang of it. We're making a payment that out of cash, which means cash is decreasing. And to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So on the credit side of the cash book, under the cash column, you're going to see five fifty, and in the details column, you're going to see miscellaneous expenses because that is what we will pay. On the twenty second, now we are seeing it says issued to technical suppliers. A check for 5600 in full payment of goods received on January 5th. Right. So, so let's remember something here. Um, it's a check for 5600 in full payment, which means it implies that there was a discount involved. Now, let's go back up to the transaction on the 5th, and we are going to see that it was 6000 right? The purchase, the value of the purchase was $6,000. Now, if we are paying them only 5600 how do we account for the $400 difference between the $6,000, which was the value of the purchase, and the value we're actually paying, $5,600? That difference is accounted for by a discount allowed of $400. So because we're making a payment, we know we're going to go on the credit side of the cash book. It's going to be under the bank column because we're paying a check. And the discount received will have the amount of the discount that we received. And if you add the 400 to the 5600, you should get back the 6000, which was the original amount owed in the first place. Okay, let's take a look at the next transaction on the 24th. It said cash sales amounted to 4900, of which 3200 was banked. Okay, so I chose to deal with this using two entries. Well, technically three. So we have cash sales, which means that we should have an entry on the debit side of the cash book because we're receiving money. And if we receive money, that means that our amount of cash is increasing. 
and to record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. So you're going to see on the debit side of the cash book under the cash column, 4,900 as the money coming in. Now it's said that we banked 3,200. So that's taking money from cash and putting it in the bank account. So that's another contra entry. So we're going to go on the credit side to show the money coming out of cash. So credits to an asset account decrease the asset account. How is it a decrease? Because we're taking money from physical cash and putting it in the bank account. So our physical cash is going down. And when an asset decreases, we have to credit the asset account. So you're seeing the 3200 under cash on the credit side. It's going to bank, so that's the detail. And of course, the C implies or tells us it's a contra entry. So that 3200 will also be found on the debit side of the cash book, but under the bank account because we put money in the bank. It said we banked 3200. The money to bank, uh, sorry, the money that went into bank came from cash. And we put a C to show that it's a contra entry. Right? Now you could also have done this differently. You could have put 3200 under bank and 1700 under cash in a single um, debit item, debit entry, to kind of avoid having to do these three things here. But I wanted to show the 4900 coming in and the 3200 being split. Okay, that's just my preference in this case. If you did it the other way, that's perfectly fine as well. Now we have an another transaction on the 26th. We see the check in full settlement from Carter Business Solutions. Let's go back up to the 14th, where we have that transaction with Carter, the original transaction. Credit sales amounted to 5,700. And terms, right, so they were supposed to get 10% discount if they paid in 10 days. Now, this is the 14th. So, what day did they pay us? The 26th. So, they're not entitled to a discount. So the check in full settlement from Carter would be the full 5700 which we would see here on the debit side of the cash book. Because money is coming in, it's a check, so it's going to go on the debit side under the bank column. And we're going to put Carter Business Solutions as the particulars because that's where the money or the check came from. Okay, so next we have a transaction on the 31st, right? So it says, Drew, right, 1500 in cash for personal use. So when they say Drew, they mean withdrew. So the owner took out 1500 in cash for personal use. So let's deal with that first as a second piece did. So that's drawings, which means they're taking money out of the business for personal use. And that's going to go on the credit side under the cash column. Right? So on the credit side, under the cash column, you're going to see 1500 representing the 1500 coming out of cash and going to drawings, the owner's personal, well, being withdrawn for the owner's personal use. And it was also another half here paid the interest due on the credit union loan. So let's go back up to the top and we will see that when we took that credit union loan, right, it was $5,000 with a 1% interest payment at the end of each month. Okay, so 1% of 5000 is $50. So we're going to put that again on the credit side because it said it was paid in cash. So of course, when you make a payment out of cash, cash is decreasing. And to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. Okay. Now, the last thing to tell us here was something about closing stock. And the sales assistant has not yet been paid wages of 300. Okay. So that's irrelevant to the cash book. Now, to balance off the cash book, we have to compare the total money coming in with the total money going out. So on this side, in cash, we have $6,300 coming in. And we used... 5300 so that means we're going to have a thousand left for bank the same thing we have 18,004 coming in and we have 12,005 going out so that's going to be 5900 i think right so it's going to put the balance carry down here right right so the balance so now when we total both sides the totals will be equal right and of course oh i forgot to put the total for the um the discount received, right? So discount received, so discount received is, is not balanced off against discount allowed. And there was no discount allowed, by the way. It's just total and transferred to the discount received account in the general ledger. And of course, the balances are carried down here and brought down on the debit side because assets usually have balances brought down on the debit side. And if you want, you can put 31st of Jan or, sorry, or the 1st of February. Okay, so that's it for the cash book. Let's take a look at part B. They want us to do an income statement. Okay, so we're doing an income statement, so please head it up properly. Name of the entity, J.D. Ponting. Name of the statement, income statement, and for the month of 1 Jan 2008. Now, you might be asking, how are we going to do an income statement with information from a cash book? Don't we need a trial balance or a list of balances? The answer is actually no, we don't need that list. 
We technically do have a list there, it's just not in the form to which you would be accustomed. Now, if we pull back up the information from the, well, yeah, the information, we're going to see two sets of sales. So the first set of sales came from Carter Business Solutions, right? That was 5,700 there, all right? So 5,700. And then a couple of days later, we had cash sales, 4,900. So we had two sets of sales. We had one credit sale for 57 and one cash sale for 49. That's going to total 10,006. Now we're going to subtract our cost of goods sold. Now, JD Ponting just started business and they didn't tell us that we had opening stock so we could safely assume we had no opening stock. Now the purchases, there was one purchase figure and that was the 6,000 from Technol Supplies, right? So $6,000 there. So opening stock plus purchases gives us cost of goods available. And from that, we have to subtract closing stock, right? Now they did tell us that the closing stock was 360. So we're gonna use that information, boom. 6,000 minus 360 is going to give us 5640, which when subtracted from the sales figure of 10,006 is going to give us a gross profit of 4,960. Now, there was, you're seeing a little line there that reminds me that there was a revenue. There was one revenue. What was that revenue? It was a discount received. So remember, on the 22nd, we paid Technol suppliers a check for 5,600. But remember, Technol, the value of the purchase was 6000 So how can we owe them 6000 and pay them 5600 and fully settle it? It's because we received a discount. And discounts received are classified as, well, revenue, sorry. So when we add those together, we're going to get 5360 And now we'll subtract some expenses. Okay, so the first expense I'm seeing up is the rent. So that was on the 3rd. It said paid rent for January by check. The next item I'm seeing is where they told us that after we bought the vehicle, now when you purchase a non-current asset, that's capital expenditure, that does not go in the income statement in its raw form. We'll charge depreciation. Now we have no depreciation information in the question, so we're not going to worry with that. But the repairs, the 1300 in repairs, that's an expense and that's going to go there as well. Next up on the 19th, we have the miscellaneous expenses paid in cash. That's $550. If we go down a bit more, we're going to talk about the um, the interest on the credit union loan. So remember, the, the loan was $5,000 and a 1% per month interest rate of $50. And there was this thing that snuck in at the end here that they said the sales assistant has not yet been paid wages of $300. So it means we incurred the expense, but we hadn't paid it, which means it's an accrued expense, which we need to include because we have incurred it. Regardless of whether we pay it or not, it has been incurred and needs to form part of the current period's profit calculation. Okay, so we're going to total the expenses now, giving us 3700 which when subtracted from the 5360 above gives us 1660 as net income. And there you go. You've prepared an income statement, practically using a cash book and the information used to prepare it. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question one from the May 2009 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.